am here with Amy Buteau, who is with the Oklahoma Biological Survey, and we are at the base of Black Mesa, just north of Kenton, Oklahoma, and basically as far west in the panhandle of Oklahoma as you can get. In fact, we're on mountain time out here. And Amy, we came out to talk a little bit about the ecology that you see here. Can you tell me about what's going on behind us? Well, Casey, as you said, we are at the base of Black Mesa here in Cimarron County. <laughs> this is the short grass prairie. We're kind of gradually in edging into a, pen a pinion juniper woodland. Uh, the juniper here is not the eastern red cedar that most of your viewers are probably familiar with. And they look with. very similar. They but... do look very similar. Uh, the differences are minute. You have to look at the little leaves under a scope and things like that. Really, really picky botany type stuff. <laughs> uh, it also sort of has a different growth form, as you can see, more bushy. Okay. Uh, we also have pinyon pine here, which is obviously not in the rest of the state. This is the only place in Oklahoma where pinyon grows. As we go further up the mesa, we will see more of that. Okay. Uh, so we have the one-seeded juniper and the pinyon pine here. And you touched on some of the grasses. We have one of those grasses here in front of us. Uh, a lot of us as horticulturists and gardeners know this as uh, a blonde ambition cultivar, but this is the native uh, blue grandma grass. Yes, correct? this is Budalua gracilis or okay. blue grandma grass. It is actually pretty much one of the dominants here where we're standing. And it looks just lovely out here. It's a nice wispy grass. It's a beautiful grass. So let's talk a little bit about some of the other forbs that we're seeing around here. One that's catching our eye right away is this. It's a senecio. This is a senecio. This is the thread leaf ragwort, senecio flaccidus. And as you can see, it's more of a shrubby type plant. Mm -hmm. Uh, beautiful blue-green foliage. I think it would look great in the garden. I don't know if it's in cultivation, but I would certainly want it in my garden. Yeah, and in fact, there's some other composite fl uh, plants that we're seeing around here. There's a couple of daisies, and I think I even saw the chocolate daisy. Is that correct? It is. It is. This is Berlandiera lyrata, or uh, another na name for it is lyre leaf green eyes. It's a member it kind of has this sort of look after the petals fall off. It right? is, it is. Yeah, that's exactly why. Uh, it does smell like chocolate, as you mentioned it, specifically the center part right here when it's fresh. It has just this odd chocolate-like aroma. Mm -hmm. It does. It smells a little cocoa-like. It's really nice. It's a beautiful plant. I like how the rays underneath are sort of purple with mm -hmm. little stripes. Yeah, and so the sepals then give it that green eyes common name. And they actually kind of dry nicely as well, too, there. They do. They do. And I think they seed well as well. Excellent. All right. So we've got a few succul succulents around here, too. Uh, we've got some yucca. And is this just our, our common yucca that we have here? Or? Yes. This is yucca glauca, or the soapweed glauca, glauca. Another name is Spanish bayonet. And if you touch the end, you can see why it is named that, because it is very sharp. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, actually right here, it's kind of prickly. So. Ouch. Anyway, it's one of our succulent plants. But it's not the only one. We've got prickly pears and choyas out here. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Uh, this is actually an, Apunta, an Opuntia species or a prickly pear. Black Mesa has about four different species of prickly pears. And we also have the tree choya, which is actually a cylindropuntia. Uh, you can see in the background, it makes nice yellow fruits. And this is a plant that's actually becoming more and more common out here at Black Mesa. Years ago, you wouldn't see this much tree choya. This is actually a result of overgrazing. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, cattle have come in and eaten the grasses. Obviously, they don't want to eat the tree choya, so consequently, you have more tree choya. All right. So Amy, it looks like here we have got some of that dead choya actually. And I think a lot of the homeowners use this in their landscape, but might not realize that it comes from the choya plant. This is the dried skeleton, if you will, basically. It is, it's really cool looking. And I know I have some mixed in with my sedums at home. But what is surrounding this? It looks like an aster. I mean, it's a gorgeous little plot here. It's not technically an aster. Okay. Um, it's common name, has the word aster <laughs> in it, but you know, scientific names and all. Uh, this is the tansy leaf tansy aster. Okay. Uh, very beautiful plant. It's common out here. It blooms pretty much throughout the growing season from uh, May through, you know, first frost. I even looked this morning and I saw a record from Cimarron County from January, oh, if wow. you can believe that. Wow. Uh, beautiful plant. So I, reseeding perennial? I think it is. Okay. I believe it is. Yes. All right. And then we have a little purple sneak in here that is, looks like our regular verbena. And that, that it is. See. That is common out here in the short grass prairie. Okay. 
And here in our grasses, our, our gallardia. We can't get very far without keep seeing a different plants here. Nope, nope. This, believe it or the not, yellow gallardia. is a gallardia well, related to the, the blanket flower that most of us know. This one is different in that its leaves are dissected or mm -hmm. pinnate, as we say. Uh, the common name, I believe, is red dome blanket flower. wonder where it gets that name. Don't know. <laughs> Beautiful plant. All right, and we've seen a few other plants along the way. There was a sand lily. Tell us a little bit about that plant. The it's sand, got a beautiful white flower. It is. Uh, I didn't realize it, but I guess that flower opens up in the afternoon. We drove through uh, to Kenton and saw fields and fields of it. Absolutely gorgeous. It has a lot of, a lot of stamens, so it gives this kind of lacy look. Uh, it's got really sticky leaves and, you know, they'll stick to your clothes, they'll go through the wash, you can't get rid of them. But it's a beautiful plant. <laughs> but not sticky in the fact like a, a, like a succulent no, that might no, stab you or something, no. a cactus. More, more like a Velcro that gotcha. will never go away. Right. And then the zinnia that the, we saw. The zinnia, we actually have a native zinnia here in Oklahoma. It is the Rocky Mountain zinnia. It forms these beautiful golden mounds. Uh, it's a plant that I believe would probably work really well in a rock garden. Very short profile. Very yeah. short, very kind of prostrate plant. Um, beautiful. Excellent. So Amy, we're in a different location. We're now at the Etling Lake in the Black Mesa State Park, just a little bit further from the actual Black Mesa. And so being in a more wet condition, we're finding a few different plants here. Yes, yes. This pretty guy is the copper globe mallow. It's actually in the same family as hibiscus. Uh -huh. And if you look closely at the flower, that is quite evident. Oh yeah, definitely has a mallow-like flower to it. This is a beautiful plant and I wish I had it in my garden. I love the color of it. Yeah, it's a nice color here. It's a really unique color for a flower, right. I would think. I normally don't see that. <laughs> so, and it looks like pollinators are enjoying it yes, quite a bit are. too. Yes, they are. They are. So we mentioned the, how important the grasses are to the short grass prairie, but we hear about old world blue stem a lot. And I know we have some of it here. Can you tell us a little bit about old world blue stem versus some of the other grasses we might find around here? Old world blue stem, which is this fellow right here, is an exotic invasive grass that is found in Oklahoma. Uh, as we drove into the park, you could see it all along the roadsides. Uh, I believe it was brought in for cattle and, you know, as so many things do, it escaped. You can tell old world blue stem apart from our native silver blue stem by its inflorescence. Old world blue stem has these little individual fingers that you could sort of pull apart and see. Little, little wavy fingers. Whereas our silver blue stem, is which is right me? next to you, doesn't have those little fingers. It has little tiny branches, but they're kind of stubby and they just don't really make you think of fingers. And plus it's really kind of fuzzy and white. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a native species, but it is also found in sort of degraded areas. Uh, like pastures and overgrazed sort of places. And, and there's some other plants that we might see around here. You mentioned some buckwheats. Can you tell us about the buckwheats that we might find around here? The buckwheats are the genus Eriogonum, which is a really, really large genus as you move towards the west. There are about 250 species. Uh, there are two that are more common in the body of the state that we're used to, but out here you get some really, really neat ones. They're little mat forming plants and they grow up on the rocks. and they're, they're really, really beautiful little plants. They're just unique in their own special way. And I'm not quite sure if anybody grows them for gardens, but I think that they would probably look really nice in a rock garden. Yeah, it, it seems like they can really handle those conditions pretty definitely, well. Definitely, definitely. Well, Amy, this has just been fantastic. We've enjoyed walking around well, and exploring the native areas with a, a botanist and, and seeing your hand lens out and looking at some <laughs> of the plants a little closer. So thank you for sharing this information with us. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.